All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1993 Subaru Legacy L. Up front is a 2.2 liter flat four and down below is a five speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Subaru Legacy for a couple of reasons. First of all, I love manual Subaru wagons. I think the world agrees with me in that statement, but this is the final year for the first generation of the Subaru Legacy. The Subaru Legacy has become world renowned as the go-to Subaru wagon. It's beloved in so many different communities and yet this is the very first generation of it. This is the genesis. This is where it all started. And so to better understand where Subaru is today, let's take a look at where they were almost 30 years ago. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can submit your own vehicles through a quick and easy submission form. You could also buy stickers like this retro sticker pack and big freaking bottle sticker that both come with free shipping. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 2.2 liter flat four under the hood making 130 some horsepower. It's not very powerful. It's pretty gutless. It's not completely dead. It's not completely useless, but it's not a very fast, quick or responsive engine. It is a single overhead cam engine, which is fine. However, a perk of that means that the spark plugs are actually a lot easier to access because they're actually at an angle where more modern Subarus doing spark plugs is not fun. But here in the 93 Legacy, not that bad. Like I said, paired to it, five speed manual transmission, feels great, shifts great, has a decently long throw, but that's what I would expect out of a station wagon and especially out of a Subaru of this generation. Clutch is nice and light, very easy engagement, and the overall driving feel is just great. It's exactly what I would want out of a vehicle like this. Last but not least, of course, the Subaru Legacy is all wheel drive. However, in some rare instances, you could find a first generation Subaru Legacy that was front wheel drive. Now, they're not very popular and Subaru quickly took that away, only offering all wheel drive, but in the first generation, you could find front wheel drive. With that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four main gauges. On the left is my coolant temperature and tachometer, and on the right is my speedometer and fuel. You'll notice this vehicle only has 120,000 miles on it. Not too bad. On the steering wheel, I just get two thumb buttons for the horn and the airbag, but that's it. It's the big pillowy airbag steering wheel you've come to know, love, and respect from the 1990s. Off to the left, I do have my defroster and cruise control, as well as my power mirror adjustments. And moving out of the door, I have my lock and unlock and my power window switches. Moving into the center, I have two climate control vents and the climate controls themselves. I like how it says legacy on it, but very, very basic off max AC vent, by level all of your standard 90s things here. However, down below that, we do have cup holders, so we'll do a big friggin' bottle test here in the 93 Legacy, and of course, it fails. I don't think any cup holder coming out of the dashboard has ever passed the big friggin' bottle test, and most 90s cars don't pass at all. I'm just happy to see that the Legacy even has cup holders at all. So, unfortunately, it fails, but I'm not that mad about it. <laughs> Down below those cup holders, I do have the radio. I get a nice digital clock off to the right. It says Subaru and it says logic control system, which is just fantastic. I have faders and bass and treble, which is nice. Then I have two different cubbies. So a little storage cubby down below the radio and then an ashtray down below that. And then we move on to the shifter. The shifter feels, looks, and is very plasticky, but to be expected from a vehicle from the 90s. And of course we have this very rubber flimsy shift boot down below. Then I have my handbrake and the center console and moving on to the seats. We do have power seat belts, so this is from the era of power seat belts. And if you're interested, I recently did a short documentary about the history and the reasoning behind power seat belts, so please go check that video out if you are interested in why they existed. Just a very 90s thing. But the seats themselves are very comfortable, very 90s pattern as well, these sort of zigzags. It's almost like zebra print, but not. They are very comfortable. The L was the more base model of the Legacy, and so we don't get any crazy nice features, but 
they are comfortable. Speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 1993 Subaru Legacy L, and a couple of things to note back here. The back seat space is not great. I've always complained about back seat space in Subarus. All the way up until about 2010 is when back seats actually do start to improve for the Subaru brand, so that is something that they've changed over the last 30 years. However, I'm not terribly squished back here. My knees are kind of hitting the seat in front of me. I'm 5'11", and my head is coming close to the ceiling, but not all the way. It's just because the Legacy is so long and a wagon, I would expect a little bit more space back here, but unfortunately, I don't get that. Speaking of space, however, we do have a huge cargo space, so let's go take a look at that. All right, so we're on the back of the Subaru Legacy L. Pop the trunk here. And as you can see, you get tons and tons of trunk space. This was one of the biggest selling points for the Legacy at the time. With that longer wheelbase, longer roof line, you get tons of space back here. And something really cool I haven't seen on Subarus from this era is you get this giant privacy cover, which covers the speakers, but don't worry, Subaru thought of that and cut little holes for the speaker to play through the cargo cover. Pretty cool there. Of course, those seats do go down. There's that little peg right there. You pull that up and then those fold flat. Really, really neat. Tons of space back here. Just fantastic. Now we gotta talk about the looks and I really do love the look of the first gen legacy. I think it has that sort of boxiness, but you could see that car styling was starting to move towards bubbly. This body style debuted in 1989 across the world, but 1990 here in the United States and ran until 1993, where in 1994, they upgraded to this body style. This is actually a Japanese twin turbo one that I reviewed last fall that I'll leave at the end of this video, but that's what they looked like after this one. I also have to comment on the fact that this is a beautifully 90s vehicle. What I mean by that is the hubcaps are not factory. However, they look awesome. They're very late 80s, early 90s. I feel like I'm a replicant in Blade Runner driving this car with these wheels. And you gotta love that graphic running down the side as well. So 90s, so retro. I mean, this car is just a running, driving, sanctuary of the 90s. I love that. But now let's get to my final thoughts. What do I think about this Subaru legacy? Well, this is a very interesting point for Subaru because this is where Subaru really started to gain traction here in the United States. This Subaru legacy was built in Japan. At this point, all Subarus were built in Japan. Subaru is a Japanese company. However, now most Subarus are actually built here in Indiana, in the United States. But here you can see some seeds that Subaru was really starting to plant. The all-wheel drive system was becoming standard. It wasn't fully standard at this point, but becoming very standard. And they realized, wow, people in the United States actually like wagons. Let's do a second generation of the Legacy. And the Legacy is still made today. Unfortunately, they don't make the wagon variant. That's now the Outback. But 30 years later, they're still making Subaru Legacies. And this is the first one. This is what kicked it off. It's so cool to be driving the very first iteration of something. It's like visiting the first McDonald's or reading the first Harry Potter book. You get to see where the story begins. And as time goes on, you get to look at this car with newer and newer perspective. Looking back, right now, Subaru is a great, fantastic company and one of the top selling vehicles in the US. But maybe 20 years from now, you'll be watching this video and think, hey, Subaru isn't around anymore. Or maybe Subaru's the most dominant company in the world. Maybe Amazon bought Subaru or Apple has a partnership with them now. Whatever it might be, this Subaru legacy will always be the jumping off point. There is no other start. This is it. You're seeing it right here. And that is just so cool to be driving. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Harry for bringing this awesome piece of history out to play today and allowed me to review it. He is absolutely awesome. He's been great to work with. And I am so thankful that I am able to drive something like this. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.